Hello everyone, welcome to this broadcast for 2024. So I'm not quite sure whether you're watching live right now. Those of you joining me live, we're recording this on the day of the solstice, December 21st. So welcome if you're live. Or maybe you're watching this at some day in the future or even sometimes I know people watch these months into the year of 2024. So, um, you know, I'm for those of you who are completely new to me, I'm Lee and I'm an intuitive and a channeler. And for 11 years now, I have been creating monthly videos called energy updates, where at the beginning of the month, I'll go through usually around seven or eight themes that I'm given around what might be showing up for us energetically, uh, psychically, emotionally, mentally, what we're going through. But once a year, uh, on December 21st, I kind of cast the net wider and look at the year ahead as a whole. And I always think this gives us two opportunities. We can both vision ahead and think about where we might be going and how we want to experience things. But it also gives us a moment to reflect on where we've been and to see what we might need to release or let go of. So I think this broadcast will probably be about an hour or so long and I will be channeling my guides at the end of it. But I do have a whole list of things to share with you. You know, I my intention was I literally say, can can we get like four or five themes for the year? And I was given nine. I was still uh, typing up to an hour ago over the last day, all of the stuff that I was getting. So what I'm going to do today is go through each of the themes. I'm going to read them out to you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to put those themes in the caption box underneath the video. So where there is typed information, in there you will be able to see what I'll be reading in a second. Um, or if you signed up for this um, broadcast through one of the links that we had out there, and you're watching this as a replay, then there will also be a PDF available to you that you can download if you want to print it out for any reason. So um, before I get started, I just want to say, you know, I've been speaking to lots of people lately, and I've had my own experiences of this. It has been a tumultuous time. Um, the amount of, we can call it electrical energy, uh, you, the solar flare activity, the swirl that has been going on in the world has definitely affected people who are sensitive energetically to all of the ups and downs and the changes that we're going through. So you might be finding yourself right now in a real moment of crisis or overwhelm or I can't go on anymore or I'm just can't take anymore. That That's kind of the worst end of it. And a lighter end of it might be you are really realizing things need to change in your life, the way that you're living, relationships, choices that you've made. You don't maybe know what the answer is yet, but you're definitely feeling that swirl. And I just want to say it's going round and everyone's feeling it on some level. Now, you might be doing really well. You know, you might be actually I I had a whole purge of my life earlier this year or a few months ago. But what I've been hearing from people is certainly from November to now, a lot of people seem to be going through this. And the message I got from my guides is it this will play out through February. So if you haven't had a purge period yet, but you feel like you're really on the verge for one or in need of one, I hope that this video can perhaps start that process for you and that you can find some time to process in the coming days and weeks because otherwise those purges come and <laughs> hit us when we're not expecting them. I know for me, I got mine last week and I didn't see it coming, but I'd had a lot going on all year. And so, you know, I got to that moment that you get to where things still and quiet and all of a sudden I had a lot to move through. Um, that, that took me about a week, a uh, better part of a week, which, uh, you know, isn't that long, but it was fairly intense for me. And I've been speaking to other people who've been really feeling that clear out, noticing that purging experience. So I just preface that because some of you might be here eager, 
eager and ready to vision your next year and find out what some of the themes are. But some of you might also be here hoping that this vision uh, this vision broadcast gives you hope or gives you uh, some faith or some well-being because it, it it is a tricky time when you've got so many things in the world that are changing and are polarizing and are destabilizing. It has a knock-on effect on everybody. And if you're someone who has been a spiritual seeker all your life or someone who has lived with energetic awareness all your life, you yourself might be going through one of the toughest times right now and that might be really surprising to you because you think, hang on a second, you know, I've my yoga practice has kept me sustained for 10 years and I've I've managed to keep myself balanced. What's going on now? Why am I feeling so electrified and changed from the inside? And for any of us going through that, it's because of 2024 and beyond who we need to become as individuals and the response that we're having as individuals to the global situation and the collective energy. So the way I tend to talk about this, for those of you that are new for me, is I focus on the personal and the global, and the two are very connected. You might be having a very personal focus right now, but still you will be affected by what's going on out in the world, even if you're not paying attention to it or trying to keep it, keep a shield between you and world events. Equally, you might be all about world events right now and completely focused there, but that will be having a knock-on effect on you in an internal level, on an internal level. So I'm going to start with some of my notes, but just to kind of um, give you an overview, there were two things I was given about 2024. So 2024 is going to be a year of strength and purpose on a personal level. So for you as a soul, for you on a personal level, 2024 is going to carry an energy of being a year of strength and purpose. On a global or a collective le level, it's going to be a year of unexpected shifts and revolution. So on a global outer world level, you've got unexpected shifts and revolution. And on a personal level, you've got strength and purpose. So, you know, whichever way you look at it, that's a very strong energy, very, very strong energy year. So just to come back to what I was saying about the purging, the clearing that lots of people are experiencing and, and moving through, you know, a question I would ask you to ask yourself at the moment is, where are you in your process right now? Can you answer that question? You know, if I were to say to you, where are you in your life right now? How are you feeling? What are you experiencing about life right now? Where are you in your process of life right now? Do you get an answer if you just consider that question? Where are you in your process right now? See if an answer comes. So it's good to check in with yourself, particularly as things are busy and things are moving fast. Sometimes when we ask our soul or our higher self, to give us an overview of where we're at, ask that higher question, it can be surprising. You know, it's particularly good to ask that question when you are struggling, because sometimes the answer you will get is not where your focus is. So let's say you're having a really rough day and what you're mostly focused on is your experience of feeling anxious about your life or about the world or overwhelmed by everything you've been going through. But you ask that question and you say, where am I right now? And you might hear uh, or, or sense, I'm opening, which completely reframes the process that you're in. Um, you know, I know one of my, um, my things that I have, I constantly learn from is, uh, you know, don't resist the process. You know, I find that if I'm taken strongly by a process and it overwhelms me or shocks me and I spend a day or so fighting it and wondering what's going wrong. Uh, of course, there's nothing going wrong. It's just it's life happening to you and moving through you and changing you. So where are you in your process right now can be a really good question just to ask yourself, especially when you're going through tough times, because you often get a higher answer or a wider perspective. It's no different to having a friend in your life who's going through really tough times. 
Um, let's say you have a friend in your life who's just lost a loved one and that's something you've been through and you can see they're right at the beginning of the grief process and there's nothing you can do to take that away from them. But you do know, because you've been through that specific grief process, you do know that, okay, after about a year, it's going to feel different. And after about two years, it's going to feel different again. So you can hold that perspective for them if they're open to it or if it's appropriate for them to even hear that, uh, depending on where they're at with the grief. So sometimes remembering that if we go to our soul, if we go to our spirit and just hold a wider awareness of where our focus is, our mental idea of what's going on and just go, how am I doing right now? It's interesting, the kind of higher answer that you can receive. And this is a really important practice for all of us to remember to go for that wider perspective. So I just wrote a couple of things here that will be in the notes. So many are shaken and stirred energetically right now. For many of us, that began in November and December because the 2024 energy began early. I was doing the energy update for November and literally what came through was, you know, your 2024 is already coming into you at the end of 2023. It's the strength of the year of 2024 is coming in early. So a lot of us have been clearing, purging, being struck by strong energy in order to be ready to run with what's coming in 2024. So if it hasn't hit you yet, it might not hit you. And so that's okay. You don't need to go hunting it, but it will continue through February. So don't be surprised if you go through some, you know, brief or mini dark nights of the soul or questioning things or feeling very off and confused. A lot of people on the planet right now don't know where the ground is. And that, you know, that's kind of par for the course for where we're at. It doesn't mean we can't restabilize and it doesn't mean that we can't find the new ground that we're all beginning to work on. And we'll come to that later. So we are necessarily purging and shedding all that went before. Identity shifts, challenges and death and rebirth energy have been moving through us. So we can ultimately hold and ground more light in the future. Quite often after an epiphany or a, a, a breakthrough or a big healing moment in your life, you can find yourself afterwards in a period where you feel off kilter, strange, low. And often I've heard people say, well, am I regressing? But what my guides have explained to me is we become more light, more evolved, more aware. We take off layers of our ego and our wounding. And we can feel very expanded when that happens. But then what tends to happen is the next part of you that's a bit lower, a bit tighter, a bit more wounded will just come up to the surface because it wants to be released. So that yo-yo experience that you can sometimes have, it doesn't mean you're regressing. It's often just part of the evolution. And everyone's going through that at some level right now. Now, the other way of looking at it is you could say, well, actually, I've got a friend who is not at all into talking about energy and doesn't even consider their feelings and their thoughts. But if you look at what's going on in the world, depending on where you live, depending on what's going on globally, everybody's being challenged in different ways. So if the challenge isn't finding you energetically, it often finds you in the form of the loss or death of a loved one, um, something that goes wrong in your business or in your life, something going on in your area that's devastating or that's challenging or making it hard for people to survive. So there's a lot of that flying around. So what carries us through tough times? This is really important to remember. What carries us through tough times? So love, connection and purpose. So I know for myself, you know, I, I have a members community called The Portal and I know many of you uh, will be here. Hello. We had a broadcast on Friday and I was um, leading an, a, a, an exercise for us to kind of calibrate to what we'd been through all year in that in that broadcast. And I just shared, you know, I've had many personal challenges this year myself. And one of the things that I recognize has carried me through is love, the love of other people, the love and connection I've found through my spiritual practices and my connection to my guides, to not my guides, things that I do in daily life that help me feel open, 
yeah, if it wasn't for love this year, my challenges would have been even harder. So love is something that we, of course, can feel inside ourselves, for ourselves, for our life, the universe, everything. But it's also something that we share with each other. You know, we help lift each other up. And connection, connection to others, connection to something you really believe in. You know, I always say there are lots of people on the planet who aren't that into humans, and that's okay. They're here for nature. They're here for animals. They're here for a cause. You know, they're here because they don't really want to spend too much time hanging out with loads of other humans, but they're here to be architects of something for the planet or perhaps for humanity for the future. So that swings into purpose. What's your purpose? You know, I have lots and lots of friends who are parents, and they always say, you know, well, I have to parent today, so I can't give that too much time. My purpose right now is my parenting. So love, connection, and purpose, those are three areas that are really important areas of life. So if as you're listening to me, you think, God, yeah, I'm, I'm okay on purpose, but I'm a bit deficient right now on love and connection. I'm not feeling very connected. I've lost a lot of friends, or I haven't got as many friends or people in my life as I want. Then maybe love, connection, or purpose can be one of the things that you vision for 2024, because those are three things that can really help us through tough times. And equally, sometimes it's helping others when you're going through a tough time that can reset you and bring you back. So if you are in a purge period right now, let's say you're clearing out a lot, you're one of the people that I've been talking about, can you use this time to hibernate, rest, and reset? Can you use this time to hibernate, rest, and reset? Now, most of us aren't so um, free in our lives or our responsibilities that we can just go off for a week and hibernate, rest, and reset. But what I've learned to do over the years is to take pockets of time that I can. So even if it's just a conscious hour in the day that I can protect that time for myself, for my process, for resting, resetting, reflecting, whatever it is I need to do, is there a way that you can create even a mini hibernation period right now where you have your focus on, yeah, I do, you know, I've had a lot going on this year and I, I could do with just taking 30 minutes a day to reflect on that. And maybe after three or four days, I'll feel ready for 2024 and I'll feel like I have calibrated to everything I went through this year. Because it has been an overwhelming year for so many people and it's important for us to be able to gather up all the pieces that we've been through so that we don't feel like we're dragged into next year. And that's really important if you want to create vision or manifest. If you want to create vision or manifest in the future, you will drag everything from the past and the present with you. So if you've got some stuff to clean up, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, this is a great time to do it, this period of the year. So when you are hibernating, resting, or resetting, what can you reflect on, learn from, and be grateful for? So reflecting is literally taking a chance to look back and go, yeah, what did happen in 2023? Let me get my pen and paper out and just write a few things down, or let me open up a file on the computer and just do like a list of everything that happened to me. It can be quite scary. <laughs> you sometimes look at that list and go, oh my God, no wonder I'm tired because we move at such a pace right now that we can lose a sense of everything we've asked of ourselves. So reflecting can let you look at what happened this year. And if you want, you can make a list of the positives and the challenges. You know, you can say, what was really challenging for me this year? And what, what was really good for me? What are you learning from when you rest and reflect and look back on. So can you see what 2023 taught you? Often this will relate to your challenges, the things that perhaps were really difficult or tough that you're now a little further through and you can go, you know what, that was a really challenging thing that I went through with my friend. But at least I now understand my friend more. I understand how I react in a situation like that. And I also know what to look out for in the future. So we always have the opportunity to learn from the experiences we go through. 
And lastly, what are you grateful for? You know, what can you be grateful for from this year? So, you know, one of mine was I'm grateful for the love that carried me through, the people who loved and supported me at the times I needed it. You know, what are you grateful for? That was the first thing I came up with. I mean, it's very, it, for, for me at this point, and I'm sure for many of you, it's actually quite easy to make your gratitude list huge. There are so many incredible things about being alive and I think when we're going through tough times like we have been lately um, on the planet, it's important to recognize what you're grateful for. What is life giving? What is light bringing in your life, in your immediate environment, on the planet, in the world? And being able to organize your reflections in that way. OK, what, am, what happened this year? That's your reflection. What did I learn this year? That's a little bit of analysis about what you, what you went through, some of the tough stuff or even some of the great stuff. You might be like, yeah, I really learned how to uh, program computers, which was something I took myself off to do at the beginning of the year. And wow, I did it. That's great. I achieved that. That's really good. And equally, what are you grateful for? So just three areas that you can use to reflect back. And again, we're putting this in the notes or on the PDF. So if you wanted to just take... 10, 15 minutes out of your day to give yourself this conscious time, you, you can. Um, so finally, before we go to the themes of 2024, two questions for you to consider. What are you ready to purge or release from this year? Now you can take minutes to do that or you can just do it with me right now. See what comes to mind. See what pops into your intuitive mind, your higher mind. What are you ready to purge or release from this year? Sometimes when we ask ourselves these questions, the answer surprises us. You might get something very specific. You might say, the conflict I'm in with my sister. It might be much more amorphous than that. It might be energetic. You might say, I'm ready to release struggle. I feel like I've been struggling all year and I'm ready to be done with struggling. I'm ready to try and create something different. Which leads to the next question. What are you ready to vision and invite for 2024? What are you ready to vision and invite for 2024? So this for you can be a state of being that you want to experience. Many of you will include prayers for the world and wanting to see the world become a more healed and harmonious place than it is right now. It might be very specific. You might be very clear about something that you feel you need in your life that's the next part of your evolution. Be careful not to judge what comes through. You know, I, I remember once leading a workshop and doing an exercise along these lines and uh, understandably someone in the workshop wanted to manifest a relationship. She wanted to bring a romantic relationship into her life. But she said, but I also judge that because I know that I don't need one other person to experience love through. I can experience love with the whole world. So she was a little mixed about it, but she kept having this soul vision of wanting to bring a romantic relationship into her life. And so part of the work that we did that day was her just trusting that something in her soul wanted that and that she could allow herself to bring it in. And lo and behold, she did several months later and, and it was what she needed. And it didn't mean that that fixed her whole life, but it was the next part of her evolutionary journey. That's what we're always doing. And you know, when you ask a question and let your soul or your intuition answer, we have to be careful not to judge it too quickly and to trust. Ah, that's interesting. I didn't even, I hadn't even made that conscious. What is that about? Why is it that I heard that I want more joy in my life next year? And do you start negotiating? Do you go, well, actually, I've got a lot more joy than other people in my life. Well, great. Maybe you need more joy next year because you're a generator of joy in your, in your world. We have to be careful about what our mind or our ego wants to talk us out of. 
And by all means, if you heard something wild, crazy, and potentially destructive to other people, that's a whole other story. But if you heard something that you're not sure you can give yourself or allow yourself, that's usually the ego talking. And the soul sets up these experiences for us to continue to grow, evolve, and open. And we're all doing it together. But you, as an individual, like we all do, you have a part to play. You're a piece of the puzzle, like we all are. So you allowing what you need next on your soul journey is really important. So I'll ask you the question again. What are you ready to vision and invite for 2024? What are you ready to vision and invite for 2024? Okay, so with that done, and you can spend more time on what we just did anytime. So if you if you like the exercise, you feel like you just started uncovering and unpacking things in yourself, great. You can come back and spend more time with this. But for the purposes of today and everyone's time, I'm going to move on and I'm going to walk us through some of the themes I've been given for 2024. So obviously, in each of my monthly energy updates, these will show up in different ways as we go through the year. But when I get these more broad strokes, for some of you, hearing ones that you might resonate with immediately, it starts to prepare and align you with some of the energies that are coming. And there might be some that you completely don't resonate with, or many of them. So you can either listen to this in an abstract way, or it might be that something that you hear today starts the activation process for you around one of these energies that you're going to tune in more deeply on in 2024. But just to recap, it's a year of strength and purpose on a personal level. It's a year of unexpected shifts and revolution on a global level. Okay, theme number one, personal evolution acceleration. So personal evolution acceleration. We have been letting go of old ways of being to allow new ones in. That process has been going on for years for many of us. Some of your new ways of being, your habits, your choices that you're going to create in 2024 may seem drastic or wildly different to before. So to you or to people who know you, 2024 might be a year that you do some radical changes. Now, these can be everything from dietary changes that really change the way you see and experience the world, maybe make it inconvenient for some of your friends to hang out with you in the way that they used to be attached to hanging out with you, and that's all well and good. Um, or it might be you really dedicating yourself to a life of consciousness in an all new way. 2024 might be the year that you say, I'm really going to make this all about my health, all about my well-being, and I'm going to go all in on that for the year. Or it might be an external thing that you are going to create or do in the world. This might be the year that you're going for that big vision, that big project, or continuing to deepen and widen it. So changes in your relationship dynamics, so that's with friends, loved ones, and or endings of existing relationships and new beginnings help facilitate this. So I know this year there's been an enormous wave of relationship changes, but honestly, I feel like I've been seeing that for years. This has been a big year in some ways, but and remember, relationships are so important. The way that they shape us, inform us, we become somebody in response to people that we are, are, have as friends or lovers or spouses or family members. So when relationships change, you know, sometimes we're focused on the other person or the other people, but really what a relationship change facilitates is an opportunity for us to change. Something has come out of alignment with someone that we used to be very aligned with. So it's a big deal when relationships change and this was a big part of this message. 
The personal evolution acceleration means you might be upgrading the way that you and a friend communicate, the way that you and a loved one communicate. It may be an ending. It doesn't always mean that the transformation takes place within the relationship. But the reason this is important is part of the theme of personal evolution in 2024 is personal freedom, connection, and joy. They will be huge focuses for people. Joy is a very strong word for me to be using, especially in current times and climates, but it kept coming through. Like finding your joy or recognizing, oh my God, I haven't felt joy for years. And this might be the year where you try and figure out how to start walking back toward joy. Or for many of you who've had some challenging years, or this year has been particularly challenging, you will start to prioritize making sure you are experiencing joy at least some of the time every week. Really important. And we'll come to joy a bit more later on. So just to recap, personal evolution acceleration. We have been letting go of old ways of being to allow new ways of being in. Some of your new ways, habits and choices may seem drastic in 2024 or they may seem wildly different to who you were before. 2024 is going to be a year where we see a lot of that. So you might be shocked at the changes you make. People around you might be shocked. And that's okay. That's normal. That's going to be par for the course. Changes in relationship dynamics and or endings of relationships and new beginnings. So new relationships, new people, new connections, they all help to facilitate this. So we change in relationship to our relationships. It's because of those changes that a lot changes for us. Personal freedom, connection, and joy will be a huge focus for you when it comes to your personal evolution in 2024. So it's going to be a big year. It's going to be a radical year. And it makes sense because internal change mirrors the external change, which leads me to the, th the second theme, which is global revolution energy. So, I mean, some of this we're already seeing, but it's going to amplify next year. Seeds of discontent rising. So seeds of discontent around the world in people, not in governments, not in systems. I'm talking about we who are held in those systems of government and systems and corporations, all of that. So seeds of discontent are going to get stronger. Oppression and injustice will be causing people to rise up at a new level. Now, some of you might have heard that and start panicking, but if, if you really look at it, we've seen so much of this in recent years. It's the same energy, it's just that the volume dial is going to get bigger, and it's going to create a, a revolution in people energetically. I can't say, as many of us can't, what that's going to look like exactly. I just get the energy, uh, the, the information about the energies that are coming in. But what I can say is uh, people will be less tolerant of the squeezes that they get put in. So whether it's the system squeezing them, whether it's an area of government that is not humane or is not working on behalf of the people, is working on behalf of other agendas, people are going to be less tolerant of that because disarming truths will continue to rock our world. So disarming truths. We've been seeing more things getting revealed than ever before about where there are areas of corruption or oppression in our world. And that's just going to keep snowballing. There's a kind of snowball energy now that's going to keep rolling out. So that's what's leading to the global revolution energy. There's a, a fire that's growing and growing and growing. And 2024 is going to be a year of amplification, but also a year of culmination. So it's not necessarily that 2024 is going to blow up a whole load of new surprising things. It's actually that it's going to be a very amplified year around lots of things that we've been seeing and hearing about for especially the last three years since 2020, but even going back all the way through the last decade. So the, the final piece is man-made and geomagnetic influences are going to shift things globally. So, you know, this, this is something. So if you haven't checked out Pam Gregory on YouTube, she's wonderful. She's an evolutionary astrologer. 
I was with her a few days ago and we were talking about 2024 and Pam shared with me a wonderful video that she just created about the geomagnetics for 2024 and, and what will be playing out um, on a planetary level. So man-made and um, natural disasters and how they will affect our world are going to again be in focus in 2024 and probably at higher levels than we have seen in the last couple of years. So that's where the global revolution is going to come from. And it's interesting, one of the things that I think comes up for a lot of people, and I obviously we all have different opinions, we're all we all feel slightly differently about what's going on in the world, but I often see people very worried about um, the negative agendas that are playing out on the planet. And the one thing that my guides were talking about is one of the things that these geomagnetic shifts are doing is they are destabilizing everything, including negative agendas. So part of the global revolution comes in response to all of the world shifts. So I think in your mind, you can go into a very negative or dark space sometimes about what's being done by certain humans on the planet. But actually, this is such a radical time of revolution that even those who might have negative control agendas, they're going to find it very destabilizing as well in a, in a way that we're meant to go through. Um, we're meant to have an increase in these changes that we're going to see so that something new can be born on the other side. So like any personal dark night of the soul, it, it, it often can be very challenging when you're in it or going through it. But when you get through the other side, you see that you got stronger as a result. So that relates to some of the themes that I'm going to come to about how we're going to come together more as a people, this global revolution energy. So moving on to theme number three, division and deeper connection becoming simultaneous, more balanced than in recent years. So the division of the worlds, more connected will be the experience for many people, despite seeming divides and division energy appearing. This can be energetic and literal, meaning it can show up in situations as well as internal feelings. So, you know, division energy has been so strong and, and very manufactured in recent years. Um, and it's been something that many of us get heartbroken about when we see it playing out or, or when, we, when it, we're confronted with it. But the, the strangest thing about it, and this is something my guides have said for years, as more connection grows among people, you will also see more division grow. You will see more people who don't want to go into that frequency of love, kicking off, pushing against, fighting. But one thing that seems very clear for this year is where in recent years there's this feeling of despair around division or that you're held hostage to division energies, what we're going to start seeing is more people of like minds, like hearts, like group focus are going to start banding together to create something that is very different to that division energy. This is the year that it's going to really start growing. And by 2025, the Z's, my guides have said that we're going to see more evidence of that new earth global movement. It's going to be more visible by 2025. But this is going to be another shake up year. 2024. But don't be disheartened by the division energy that's out there. Instead, recognize that for many, that division energy that we see and sometimes experience is making us see the importance and the value of connection more than ever before. So rather than going it alone or hoping for the best, make sure connection starts to become a part of your life with others, with people of like minds and like hearts, or with movements. You know, again, you might not be a, warm, a very warm, fuzzy people person, but it might be really important to you to be in connection to people who are building something for the new world, something that's going to benefit everybody. So division and deeper connection becoming simultaneous and more balanced than in recent years. People are getting a little more used to the division energy that's being sown out there, and more of us are going to work against it, if you like. Uh, to be the antidote to that and to create more pods and groups of people where coming together is the norm because it's going to be desired and craved and wanted. 
So that's going to grow this year. Theme number four, external destabilization drives internal stabilization. So external destabilization drives internal stabilization. This relates to balance, well-being, and nervous system care. If you have struggled with this, you know, keeping yourself balanced, focusing on your well-being, keeping your nervous system as, as peaceful as you can possibly help it be, if you've struggled with it, 2024, it will get easier for you to work on all of this by necessity. So health, um, health practices, tools, community, and ways of resetting yourself will be vital. Because as things get more destabilized in the external world, we have to, as a counterbalance, learn how to balance our inner selves. So you're going to see an increase in people teaching these modalities, bringing these modalities to the world. I mean, you only have to look at how, how widespread well-being and spirituality and alternative health has become in the last decade or so, but we're, we're about to see a real increase in the, in the next year or two of people needing it, wanting it, and finding it. You, you know, again, if you go through lots of personal challenges, you're sometimes brought to your knees and you realize, oh, wow, I need, I need some different coping mechanisms here. I can't just keep white knuckling my way through life. I do need to learn to meditate or do yoga or do qigong or find pieces of quiet for myself throughout the week so I'm not feeling overstimulated. So um, balance, well-being and nervous system care, they're going to be very important in 2024, but they're going to become easier to give yourself to and to find your methods that you need than ever before. So if you're someone who's in a crisis around that right now, thinking you're doing a terrible job, 2024, make it a focus and you'll find that the energy will really support you to go within and balance yourself as much as possible. Because without this, we can't show up in the world. We can't do and be who we're here to be. Okay, theme number five, the rise of the light worker. The rise of the light worker. Now, light worker is a funny word because I know some people connect to it, some people don't. So I'll, I'll try and break it down. We're all human, so we're all going through all of our lessons, all of our stuff. We all have our you know, our shadow side, our side of us that's more stressed, our side of us that's more light. But light workers tend to be people who are here for consciousness. They are here to work on behalf of consciousness, light, compassion. So, you know, there are light workers working in hospitals. They're the ones who are, you know, walking around the, the ward consciously trying to bring love, healing, soothing to the people that they're working with. There are light workers who live in the local community and just try and bring kindness or love or listening to people. There are light workers who are creating advanced technology for our health and our healing. So light worker is 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 more a, a soul uh, mission rather than a human personality because a light worker can be very varied in, in how they look. But it's essentially someone who wants to bring good and healing and light to the planet as much as possible, even as we light workers are all going through our own personal healing as we as we do our job and as we live our life in 2016 i was on stage in london giving a talk to a group of people and the message came through that 2017 to 2024 were going to be very big years on the planet very transformational years now at the time it was 2016 so i remember thinking oh, that's interesting i wonder what that's going to be so this is year seven of the seven year cycle that my guides said it's going to be a massively transformational time on the planet and it's also going to signify the rise of the light worker more people who are here to bring light bring good things to the world finding their purpose getting more committed to their purpose and getting in their lane now one thing they also said, which was interesting and, and I think has come true for many is they said, even as you struggle sometimes to be on the planet and see brothers and sisters around you going through tough times, or perhaps you're there helping those people, these will be golden years for many light workers because they will find their purpose. 
they will allow themselves to shake off the shackles of the old world or the old thing they were doing that they were doing to please everybody else. Um, they will find their way to living on purpose and and doing what they came here to do. So the rise of the light worker. This relates to your purpose in the world and feeling connected to it. 2017 to 2024 were the years listed as the rise of the light worker, and 2024 will be the biggest year yet in terms of how many people will unshackle themselves from old programming, complete major healing of past life cycles. So maybe the thing that's been in your way is, you know, this past life experience of never finding your voice, you know, that's been in your way all this time, but you've done a lot of healing around it. And now in 2024, you're ready to step out there and speak to the world or whatever it is that you're going to do with your voice and rebirth a new identity that is aligned with your soul. So I'm sure who you've been so far has to have been aligned with your soul at some point, but you, this is going to be a big rebirth year for many who haven't yet really stepped into what they want to be. So for some, this looks like a radical overhaul of what they used to do in the world. For others, it's less focused on what you do versus how you experience your life. So you might not change anything in your life, but you might go, you know what? I've done this for seven years. Now I want to try doing the exact same thing, but being really peaceful. How can I go about creating and cultivating peace in my life? Well, you'll start changing your daily habits in order to facilitate that. So it can be what you do, or it can be how you experience your life and what you do. 2024 will call in fire and strength as aspects of self you may not have known before. So 2024 will call in fire and strength in you that you may not have known before or never at the level you will feel them now. Fire brings in strong rebirth energy and it can be intense, as many of us know. So the journey isn't always easy, but the purge that fire brings reveals new strength when you reach the other side. So some of you might have been going through some of this ready for 2024, and some of you might be ready to take this fire walk to walk back to who you truly here to be. So um, we have four more themes. Okay. Heart awakening worldwide becoming more powerful. Heart awakening worldwide becoming more powerful. More people than ever before will start to feel from and act from their heart. Care and compassion will underscore their actions and what they concede in the world will underscore their actions. So the good they can do for others, the good they can do for people. This can mean you will go through personal healings in your relationships and yourself in order to arrive at this point. So yeah, you'll go through your own healing experiences. It might be some tricky relationship stuff you have to go through that, that when you come out the other side, you go, God, that, that wasn't very heartfelt. I don't want to be in that kind of thing in the future. I, I want to be in a place where I can feel that my heart is safe to be in the room. So often it is the challenge that gets us there. And equally, if not personal, Shocks and challenging changes globally, as well as personally, can facilitate this coming to pass. You know, it's interesting, my, my most recent, I, apart from obviously what we all went through in 2020 um, and beyond, that lingered, um, you know, I think back to the wildfires in California and how traumatic that was for those of us that were living through the 2018 Woolsey fire. And of course, many of you, wherever you live in the world, you've either gone through similar fires in recent years, or if not fires, other things where a lot of loss happens and a lot of um, damage happens. And it's traumatic and it can be intense, but you do come out the other side with uh, your heart is a bit more present for what is and realizes that things can disappear. And so you get a little more awake and a little more present if you've done your healing. The opposite, of course, is the trauma stays in your body and you start building defenses. So the opposite to this heart awakening worldwide, becoming more powerful, is everyone who's playing the division game, playing the competition game, wanting to go to war with other people in their life or, uh, or, or culturally. So 
even though a lot of that is getting all the attention in the world focus, it's important to recognize there is a heart awakening worldwide and it's becoming more powerful. So you, you'll you experience this yourself and you, you'll see it out there too, especially if you start looking for it and seeking and cultivating people and places where it's happening. The next theme, why are you here on earth and or how do you want to experience being here on earth? So this is very existential. Um, this level of daily purpose will come into sharp focus for many. Why are you here on earth? And or how do you want to experience being here on earth? Because we have a choice. We can make adjustments to all of that. So what is your why? Or how do you need to do things differently? if you can't arrive at a why. So some people will say, well, my why right now is bringing up my little girl, or it's helping my mother go through this transition, or it's these paintings that I'm obsessed with doing and putting out into the world, you know, whatever it is for you. But if you don't have a why, usually, you know, starting to think about well, what do I need more of in my life to feel a bit better about what I'm experiencing. That's really important because usually we reach this kind of renewal of how we see and want to experience life after existential crises or questioning of everything or other sudden outer changes that are inflicted upon us. These moments can make us see life itself through a new lens and perspective. But as crises and global questioning becomes the norm, which it is, you know, worldwide crises or questioning things about global systems is becoming more the norm, more and more people start questioning the status quo. So more and more people are going through this questioning of everything. And so that creates an energy where more people become something different to the previous status quo. So identity changes because what used to hold us in place is no longer holding us in place. So even though at the time it's unnerving, the longer that goes on, the more we start to find a new balance point inside ourselves. And from there you can go, how do I want to experience life? Because life certainly is not what I thought it was 10 years ago. So what's important to me now? What's important to what I can contribute? What's important to what I want to experience? So, and creating differently than before becomes the focus on personal and global levels. So new ways will be supported old ways will struggle. So your new ways might not be supported by all of the systems that hold our world together, but in your local group, in your own awareness, that's going to be important. Um, old ways will struggle and are struggling right now because they aren't aligned vibrationally with where we're at. That's the problem. We're in this very tricky middle place, which is why it can feel so destabilizing to people. The next theme is very short. And it, it kind of relates to this, this theme. Creational energy in 2024 will be strong and supported, but mostly in new arenas rather than the old ways. So if you're creating something new in your life or for the world, and it really is new and it's coming from a new way of doing things and a new vibration and with a new intention, that will be supported. If you're trying to replicate someone else's past success, because you think it will do something for you or the world, but it looks like the old way. It's not going to do very well. So it's very important to check your intentions with what you're creating for the world, for yourself, because creational energy will be strong and supported, but mostly in new arenas rather than the old ways. And finally, our final theme is cosmic awakening in waves. Cosmic awakening in waves. So May of 2024, the month of May, seems to center around a high point of people's connection to our connection to all worlds. So this is interplanetary. This is cosmic. This is our sense of being a part of the universe, not just Earth. Earth consciousness among humans has kept us very much focused on Earth so far. And that's kind of how we've been trained. We've been trained to only look at Earth and to dismiss anything else that might be cosmic in origin or interplanetary. The stage is now set on the planet for the next decade or two 
to radically change that. So over the next decade or two, there's going to be far more awareness of cosmic influences, cosmic relationships. Um, and 2024 is going to see more of that awareness arriving into the mainstream. It usually comes in in bursts and then settles down for a while. So May of 2024, there's some, I'm not sure why, but that's the month I'm shown there's going to be some focus around our cosmic origins, our cosmic um, relationships. Um, May won't be the only burst of that energy, but it will be the first peak point of the year and it is coming in strongly. So, cosmic awakening in waves. Now, for some of you, that won't be your area of interest. You'll be like, I'm fine, I'm <laughs> Earth's keeping me busy. But for others among you, I know that that's very much part of your focus, part of your awareness. Um, and, you know, for, for years, the Z's, my guides have been saying that there is going to be, you know, within our lifetime, a very radically different idea of, of our galactic origins and our connection as, a, as, as being a part of a universe, not just part of Earth, which is very different to how we've been trained and informed so far. So as we see more of that start to come out and literally experiences that will happen that will, in a way, blow the doors off where that's concerned, we're in a period right now where we're on a runway of that beginning to permeate, beginning to permeate the mainstream. And of course, you know, you always have to look at who's telling you the story of our cosmic origins and why what what's is there an agenda behind it but all of that stuff starts to fade because when you get in touch with those interplanetary energies uh, the human mind and its ability to control a narrative or be controlled by other people giving you a narrative it starts to disintegrate it starts to open so for some of you these cosmic waves might make you more um, visionary more connected to the all that is, uh, that might be your way of experiencing it, experiencing it. Others among you might literally be more interested in lights in the sky and all kinds of things. So it shows up differently for different people, but um, us remembering that we humans are just one part of the puzzle, one piece of the puzzle. And there's a lot about who we've been told that we are historically that is um, highly edited. So that's going to be interesting as that comes out. And that's not something I personally research or have a great deal of human knowledge around. Um, there are many people out there who do, but it's something I'm always hearing the Z's talk about um, periodically. And, and, and they've been talking about the increase in that in the coming years and how that will explain so much about our energy systems, who we are and our potential, which up until now has been somewhat clamped and limited energetically but that's about to change so quite a bit to chew on there and of course you don't have to chew on any of it you can let it all go um, but but it's going to be an interesting year and a strong year so to go back to the beginning I think that's why it's a really good time if you haven't already to just take stock of your year and to reflect on what you've been through this year. I know for me, when I went back and looked at the year, I, I literally was like, oh my God, no, <laughs> no wonder I've got stuff to purge right now. But it's interesting, having done that for about eight days, um, I do feel more reset and I do feel more galvanized and more able to be in the present and leaning toward the future than playing catch up on, on how much um, we go through. And, and what we experience. Particularly important if you're sensitive, because if you're someone who is energetically sensitive to life, then you can get easily overwhelmed when there's a lot swirling in the outside world. So you, we do have to have these periods where we go within and clear out. So I, I hope you get to have a clear out if you haven't yet. So we are at the hour mark. So at this point, I would love to channel for all of you and uh, to do that, I just encourage you to make yourselves comfortable. So I've been channeling my guides now for, let me think, I was 23, I'm 47, uh, 24 years. And um, it'll be 25 years next year. And it's been interesting because it, my experience of channeling, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is I think its role is to connect us to our own intuitive senses, our own ability to tap into something bigger than ourselves. 
For many people, the information that comes through channeling can be helpful, can expand their worldview. For a lot of people, it's the vibration. It's the feeling that they get when they listen. So the most important thing about channeling, I think, is is it useful to you or not? For some people, it will not be their thing. But for the people who it's useful for, who like the feeling of it or the information from it or the vibration of it, usually it's because you are tapping in to your own intuition on some level when you listen to a channeling that you feel aligned with. So, because like anything in the world, the, you know, we, we, we all have slightly different ways of seeing and being in the world and we're all aligned with slightly different people for that reason. Um, so, I will close my eyes, there isn't a lot to see, um, but I invite you to close your eyes and get comfortable and we'll just have a, uh, a message from my guides um, about the energy of 2024 and what we're about to walk into. Good. Welcome. Uh, firstly, we would like to ask you to uh, shake off global energy for a moment, for we are aware that many of you this year have become highly focused on the various global situations that you have been in. And in fact, if you mm, notice, many of you in the last three or four years, especially because of your more limited freedom in terms of walking around the world and being in person with each other that really was set in motion in 2020 and lasted for a couple of years, many of you have become a little more, shall we say, glued to your screens uh, looking at information about the wider world. Uh, the risk of this, of course, is that you become disconnected from your inner self, disconnected from who you are and the direct experiences and interactions that you can have on a daily basis. And it is true that many of you caught this in the last year. You started to recognize there was a part of you that had technology fatigue. And this is good for, of course, technology is a wonderful uh, thing if used correctly and can enhance aspects of your life. But it can also uh, become a place where if your soul is only living through technology, uh, you start to lose some of your human senses and some of your mm, sense circuitry starts to get dulled. So uh, the reason we bring this up is so many of you have focused on global issues, crises, mm, breakdowns, and problems, that it can make you start to worry in a way that you spiral out of control. So when we say spiral out of control, what we mean is you lose your center, you lose your point of balance, you lose the part of you that makes you you, the part of you that you have access to. So all of you, when you were poured into this human body at birth and you took your first steps on earth uh, as a soul uh, in human form, in this form that you are in in this lifetime, you all had an immediate early relationship with what distress was for and in you, what joy and peace uh, was for and in you. You all started these early formations of relationships to well-being and mm -mm -mm, feeling ill at ease. And you started developing around those different areas. And what we are here to tell you today is, even though many of you are highly aware of your journey as humans and what you have been through as souls and who you have become as a result. 2024 is going to be a year unlike any other in terms of radical shifts in who you are as an identity in the world. And this is because you are going to see some of the most radical shifts globally. It is a little like uh, nails have been taken out of the board that has been nailed into the floor one by one as the years have gone on and what has begun to happen is the wood begins to curl up. This floorboard that is getting released beneath you, the wood begins to curl up at the edges as each nail is released, almost as if there is a pressure underneath the wood that wants to burst forth. 
And now, in 2024, there aren't many nails hanging on to this specific floorboard. They are all about to slowly remove and burst forth. And as they do, they create for all of you a propulsion into who you came here to be. So, some of you are a little, mm, shall we say, irritated hearing this. You are <laughs> even perhaps angry or rolling your eyes right now because you feel like you have been told for years and years and years and years that you are going to change that your world is going to change, that you personally are going to change, and you are sick of hearing it because you don't feel it's happening enough. Well, hold on to your hats, because 2024 energy is going to bring this in strongly. And for many of you who are now exhausted by your own resistance to allowing yourself to change, when that final nail comes out of the floorboard and you are propelled upwards, you are going to be quite surprised, and it might take you by surprise, to feel yourself elevating, growing, suddenly becoming someone radically different. But the truth is, you've been working on this for years. The seeds of this who you are becoming have been mm, taking place inside you and around you energetically for years and years and years. And often, it is the discontent or the anger that you feel right before the breakthrough that is the signifier that you are about to break out of the chrysalis that you have been in. So. Remember, your mind will have all kinds of opinions about how you are doing, but your mind can only track the past and how you feel right now. And it runs those two mm, pieces of information through its formula and tells you how you feel and what's going to happen. But the soul is very connected to the future, for your soul understands your destiny. It understands why you are here. It understands the themes that you are working on. Your soul knew all too well that you were coming to a planet that was going through tumultuous transformation. So even as your human gets highly irritated on certain days where you say, I cannot take this anymore, your soul does not mind that your human is in distress because your soul understands that you are burning off distress so that you can become more embodied as an open soul going forward. But, and this is a very important but, if you aren't allowing yourself to connect to your soul regularly, you aren't helping to steer your human journey. So many of you will connect to your soul for a little while and then life will take over and get very complicated and you will forget those practices, those habits, those daily actions that can compound in you when practiced that can keep you connected to your soul. You no longer have the luxury in 2024 of being able to let go of your soul if you want to bring happiness and peace to your life in greater quantities than before and thus to the lives of others. So the themes of the year, we uh, have already delivered and Lee has elaborated on them, fleshed them out a little in a more, shall we say, human or relatable way over the course of these minutes that you have all been together. But what we are here to tell you is, it is time for you as a world to elevate, and therefore it is time for you as an individual to elevate. And whatever you have been feeling as you walk towards this new elevated vibration that so many of you are already in right now and are ready to put into action in 2024. And some of you are not yet in but can feel coming. It either makes you feel nervous or excited or a little of both. Know that particularly as you get into February and beyond of 2024, the relentlessness of transformation will be hard for you to escape deny or mm, mm, push against. So are you willing to live your life at a higher vibration? Are you willing to bring in more happiness, more light, more joy? What's your opposition to that when you are given those words? Mm, what is it that comes up in your mind, your programming that resists the idea that you could bring more happiness, light, and joy to yourself. For many of you, it will be what we call the global programming. You will say, well, how on earth can I give that to myself when there are others in the world who are suffering or struggling? And we will say, well, then if those people need you, the more resourced you are, 
And the more you are holding those vibrations and those energies and the more you are cultivating them for yourself, the more you give everyone around you an example of what is possible on Earth, because you will not be doing this selfishly for yourself. Although, of course, that might be the first uh, place your focus goes. You will instead be birthing this for the world because these are energies of the future. And even as there will be challenges on Earth in the coming years, that you will go through as humans, the light gets diminished when peace, happiness, love, connection, joy are diminished. When those energies are not allowed, when those energies are suppressed, when people are put into fear or control in a way that those energies get denied, then there is a very war for the light going on on Earth. And that is not what you came here for. You came here to be a light worker, to work on behalf of the light. And you might say, well, how can I work on behalf of the light when I'm sitting here in a heap on the floor? And we say, well, because when you figure out how to get yourself up from the floor and how to allow support into your life, you will become a template of transformation. If you were very, very depressed, it is not necessarily the person who is right in the middle of depression that you will want to speak to. It is the person who knows exactly where you are, has been where you are, but can talk to you about uh, what it was that they did to move themselves out of the depression or how it is they learned to accept depression in a way that it could no longer be the dominant or only theme of their life, but instead it could be a part of their life seasonally, but that they have many habits and practices that they have cultivated to help counterbalance the depressive energy they are feeling for whatever reason. For depression hits a body for many different reasons, depending on the person, depending on the time of life, depending on the events. The shutdown of depression is unique to each person, even though shutdown is the mm, 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 mode that it mm, mm, is putting you into. So, are you ready for a propulsive year? Are you ready to allow yourself to sit atop that propulsion, to guide that propulsion, rather than feeling like you are pushed around by that propulsion or being dragged by that propulsion? Are you ready to recognize that 2024 is going to be a year rife with transformational energy on the planet? And do you want to go into that year asking yourself how to consciously harness and align with the most positive transformation for yourself so that you can be a light worker on behalf of the most positive transformation for your loved ones, your role in the world, your experience of the planet. This is going to be a very important year in the seven year cycle that sets you up for a new Earth from 2025 onward. And it will not happen overnight. It will not be that January 1st, 2025, everything looks better. So don't expect everything to be so black and white. One of the biggest mm, mistruths you were sold is this idea of uh, everything being black and white, A or B. It doesn't work that way. Your world is far more multidimensional than you have ever been allowed to see. And you are far more multidimensional than you have ever been allowed to see or experience. So those of you who are custodians and ambassadors of that multidimensionality on the planet, you have a job to do, which is to share this with others. So yes, you who think you're sitting on the floor right now, you are a light worker. And light workers, like all humans, get tired, have bad days, and get overwhelmed, get worn down, but they come back out the other side with a new consciousness imprint in and around their body that they then carry into everything they do. So, 2024 will be a year of strength and purpose for you like never before, but it will require your participation and your willing. It will require you allowing yourself to guide that process and invite yourself to experience what it is you need to experience next, knowing that you can trust that you are a piece of the jigsaw puzzle on Earth and you will then share that 
as part of your piece of the jigsaw, and that that is where your focus needs to be. The global overwhelm is exactly that, global overwhelm. Particularly if you feel powerless to affect the whole world. But there will be areas of the world and your life and your community that you will feel very driven to support and help because they will be the areas that will align with your piece of the puzzle. There is no person on earth who is a solely benevolent activist. There is no person on earth who is a solely benevolent activist. Those who help others recognize the feeling of joy, connection and purpose they get from doing it. They are not just doing it against their will because they believe they have to save the world. And the people who are operating from that belief burn out and get challenged at some point so that they upgrade that belief system. Often those people will say, Yes, for many years I operated from that place and then I realized I needed to look after myself better and I came back to my work and my job even stronger than before when I did that. So, to conclude what has been a lot of mm, vibration and information this last hour plus, we will say, what does your soul want you to experience in 2024? See what comes to you. What does your soul want? want you to experience in 2024. Good. Now all you need do is be willing to allow yourself to change enough to allow that in. Ha! Good. In peace, in love, and in joy to all. You are rising, light workers, and the rising is now upon you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I uh, I always enjoy doing these uh, these annual broadcasts with you. I want to say thank you to Taryn at Sherwood Studios here in England, who has held this broadcast for me here in his studio, and uh, thank you to my team over in California and New York who are sending it out globally and uh, and all the other places. Um, and thank you for tuning in. And you know, my wish for you is that you can just take some time, whatever that looks like, whether it's half an hour, 30 minutes, whether it's a series of times over the coming days and weeks to just really get conscious about yourself, particularly those of you who are carers, parents, have responsibilities, you maybe don't get that time. It's really important to just take a little time back for yourself to see how you're doing and where you want to go. For those of you who would like to be held in that process, um, you might want to consider joining me for Rebirth. It's actually our seventh year of doing Rebirth, which is a process designed to help you release what you need to and invoke and create and manifest what it is that you're looking for in 2024. So we begin Rebirth on January 19th and it runs for two weeks, but even if you can't make the some sessions alive, some are pre-recorded, but even if you can't make it during that time window, you get lifetime access to everything. So if you feel called to join myself and those of you from around the world who've already signed up for Rebirth, uh, we can't wait to get started. It's the biggest thing that we do each year and it's a very transformational process. It involves channeling, energy teaching and also some music. So. We look forward to welcoming you. 
in Rebirth if you feel to join us, and I will play you a short clip of it now so that you can get a sense of it. But for those of you who just tuned in today, I wish you lots of love for 2024. If you enjoyed this and you want to get my shorter monthly videos, they're usually about 25-30 minutes long. The energy updates come out on the first day of each month on YouTube. So sending you all lots of love and uh, take good care of yourself. And here is a sample of what you can expect from Rebirth 2024. Hello, I'm Lee. I'm an intuitive, a channeler, a musician. And every year for the past seven years, I have delivered an annual experience called Rebirth. I and my team are bringing it back for January 2024, and we hope you will join us. Rebirth was something I created seven years ago when I recognized the potential that we all have as we move into a new year to look ahead and vision and become very conscious about the kind of future we want to create, while also perhaps letting go and learning from the year that we have just been through. So Rebirth is a combination of channeling from my guides the Z's, music, but also energy teaching, working with you on how you can become even more adept at learning how to guide your life, how to notice your patterns and habits, how to let go of the old, and how to really allow yourself to move into the next level of your life and your identity. It's you coming into the 2.0 version of your way of life, your way of being, and more importantly, the way you experience the world around you and the life that you are living. Rebirth is delivered through live broadcasts, but also some pre-recorded video with myself and my musical partner Davor Bozik, where we get to take a really deep dive into the process of transformation. Alongside all of this, you will experience movement and Qigong with Stephen Washington, have access to a specially curated Rebirth Healing Lounge, where various videos and audios can support your process of transformation, and access to our private community forum for Rebirth members. This is where incredible conversations, support and sharing take place between all of our participants from around the world. If you can't make it for any of the live broadcasts, don't worry. We will have full replays available for all of you and the whole experience you will have lifetime access to. You can take it at your own pace, but the reason we do it in January is it is such a fertile and potent time to cast your intentions, look ahead, and become a little more conscious about the life you might like to step into and allow yourself to experience. Rebirth begins on January 19th and finishes on January 31st. We look forward to welcoming you for Rebirth 2024.